Welcome to this Terra Madre Forum dedicated to slow food travel. A uh, few technical informations before we start. Uh, all of our speakers today speak English, um, but translations are available in Italian, Azerbaijan language and Russian language. So please, uh, if you wish, to, uh, there is a glow just in the bottom part of your screen, uh, select it. And if you want to listen in Azerbaijan language, please uh, select uh, um, Chinese. And if you wish to listen in Italian, uh, please select Korean language. Um, for uh, um, GDPR and privacy rules, unfortunately, we cannot so show uh, all the faces of um, uh, of our participants yet. Um, you can pose a question through the chat and it will be my task to uh, take care of your questions and make sure they are delivered to our speakers. So today we're here to discuss about slow food travels and the new destinations we're about to launch. Slow food travel is the slow food project that offers local areas the chance to develop their potential as a quality gastronomic destination. And they follow strict guidelines and the slow food philosophy while constructing alliances and experiences that add value to the best of local gastronomic heritage. Today, we're here to present the new destinations and projects related to slow food travel that we're about to launch around the world. The good news is that uh, we're working on so many destinations that we cannot uh, cover them all in one uh, forum. So we're focusing today on two destinations that we believe are very important, and not just because they're wonderful destinations um, for their environmental, cultural, and gastronomic heritage, so for what they have to offer. Um, we also focus on them because they represent two new and very different contexts where we have, uh, where we have worked and are working to implement slow food travel. I'm talking about, on the one hand, the Amalfi Coast, uh, which is a very famous destination in Italy, uh, and yet its rural areas are suffering from the same problems of most uh, rural areas around the globe. Abandonment of villages, abandonment of agriculture, loss of gastronomic and cultural heritage, migration. And this is because, as often happens in a very famous tourist destination, the tourist invade the few uh, meters along the shores and, uh, and focus on few very famous uh, small towns and villages and ignore um, the, the, the social and cultural ties that exist in a given uh, territory. Uh, the second destination we're going to present today is Azerbaijan. In this case, the challenge uh, for us what is to implement a project that was first developed let's say for a, for a Northern European context, and then to adapt it to a very different local context, not just for uh, the condition on the ground, but especially for the type of tourism that um, these destinations attract. Uh, and of course, we're talking of a, of a country with outstanding uh, potentials and riches in terms of the gastronomy, beauties, cultural heritages. We have the pleasure to discuss about these new destinations with the people who made them possible. So we're gonna uh, hear from uh, Giacomo Miola, uh, who is a food experience manager and coordinator of the Amalfi Coast, uh, and also a leader of a territory that, um, that we have just launched together with other five itineraries across Italy, six Italian regions. But the first set of speakers we had today uh, relates to the great Caucasus mountain uh, region of Azerbaijan. In this case, we're going to hear from, uh, of course, from Anna Kansheva and Nassimi Sadiqzadeh, who have been working under the COPJEC project financed by the European Union to deliver the first uh, sofa travel destination in Azerbaijan. Um, but we are also honored today to welcome our first guest, which is um, happens to be the director of the board of the Tourism Board of Azerbaijan, Mr. Florian Sankschmidt. Uh, who also happens to be the person who helped us write in five years ago, uh, six years ago now, the first, uh, let's say, pilot project of Slow Food Travel. So uh, we're really very happy um, to have uh, you, Florian, with us. Uh, so welcome. And to you, actually, I would like to pose a series of questions. The first is, 
uh, what is the idea behind Slow Food Travel and what was, in a way, your goal when you first envisioned this project? And the second question is, of course, how do you imagine um, Azerbaijan as a Slow Food Travel destination given its outstanding potential? So welcome, Florian, and I give you the floor. A beautiful sunny good afternoon from Baku. Uh, sun is shining. I'm um, unfortunately not in the beautiful mountains of uh, Hinalik uh, uh, mountain village, uh, which you see on my screensaver. But um, weather is uh, similar to how you how you can um, um, see it in my background. And um, uh, truly, Azerbaijan, um, uh, a widely unknown uh, destination. Um, nestled in the Caucasus, um, uh, Caspian Sea, Great Caucasus Mountains, uniclimate uh, landscape. So um, basically, uh, basically for us, the idea of bringing slow food travel um, to Azerbaijan and its uh, very rural structure was um, was the main idea. And I'm so happy that um, today already through the Kovchak project, um, we can uh, basically already um, discuss uh, in more detail. Um, let me let me quickly start with like what uh, uh, slow food travel um, is, and it's really about um, restoring proper value to food. We all know, like from a tourism perspective, that um, who have been visiting a lot of exhibitions around the world, um, that um, any destination actually in the world, um, any any um, uh, human being is um, is saying like the best food is where uh, they come from. So every country, um, every destination is proclaiming having the best food, the most hospitable people and uh, unique flavors. Um, many years back, um, uh, about seven years back, uh, my friend and um, the head of the Slow Food Convivia in Vienna, Barbara and I were discussing a lot on that topic and said basically that um, unfortunately, Food culinary is uh, mostly used uh, by tourism destinations in a, on a communications level. So basically, on a on a on a context um, of uh, marketing and uh, marketing and communication. But really, when it comes to the proper um, core, to the proper value of food, bringing giving these like a uh, uh, good, clean, and uh, slow food values uh, into these um, uh, experiences most of the time that's uh, not delivered. And um, unfortunately, the, the promise of uh, having the, the best and the cleanest and uh, the fairest food um, does, not meet, uh, does not meet when you, when you do the on-site check. So um, the, the, the principles behind is really what uh, uh, Slow Food also is all about, is about good, clean and uh, uh, fair uh, food, good in the sense of uh, high quality, a flavor, some and healthy food, um, uh, clean, obviously, that the production is uh, with no harm to the environment and uh, fair, uh, both accessible for the for the uh, co-producer or the consumer or the tourist, uh, but fair also conditions in order uh, to pay for, for the producers. And um, um, this is how basically we have always visualized uh, the idea of slow for travel. It's all about an onion. And um, in the core of the onion is basically agriculture and food uh, crafts. And working on this first slow food travel destination, what Michele um, mentioned, that was in Austria, uh, a region bordering to Italy, um, and a um, lot of small uh, scale farmers and, uh, and produce. So basically, it differed a lot from, uh, from the conditions in terms of infrastructure, in terms of already um, development um, uh, for, um, for micro and small scale producers um, to, to destination like, uh, like we have here in Azerbaijan. While the idea is all, about, uh, is all about the same. We craft basically, we design experiences and, um, and um, products, tourism products around um, the idea of uh, around concrete products which are endemic um, perfectly in the per perfect case endemic to a specific um, uh, destination and region and around that basically um, add additional services add more touristic services um, festival markets gastronomy cooking classes and um, and um, and um, 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 other other elements which are important for uh, destinations to, to deliver to tourists. Um, so all in all, what does it bring for a destination? For a destination, um, it really brings um, um, 
and high impact to the local food value chain. We see, unfortunately, when we travel around the world that uh, although we have like a, a, um, a lot of oranges or potatoes or whatever, we see uh, we see a lo- uh, globalized imported product. So local food value chain is core to bring that, to connect that with uh, tourism, to connect that with hospitality, with accommodation providers. We create jobs. Um, um, additional income uh, for farmers, um, jobs for, for uh, local people, and also improve in the, in the bigger sense the livelihood of people, especially in rural, in rural areas. For, and for visitors um, on, the, on the same level, is not about only communications that you go to a restaurant and, uh, and you drive basically a so-called local um, uh, 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 flavorful dish, but you really have the chance to, to become this co-producer, to go there, to see it, to smell it, to be part of the, of the, of the process. And the process stretches all over a year uh, most of the time. It's like a, it's from farming, it's to processing, it's to, it's to storing. So any time of the year is actually an interesting, interesting part, an interesting element to look at how this, um, how this food, how this um, um, uh, produce um, is, uh, is crafted. And I think um, um, all what it needs for a destination, and that's the great thing, and this is how actually we started also here in Azerbaijan, it needs a few um, uh, uh, enthusiastic people, it needs uh, the understanding of the idea behind, you need, uh, you need um, uh, the motivation to develop something which is a bit of, uh, of the, um, um, uh, the, the globalized concept of developing uh, a tourism destination. Here it really starts with the producers, with the craftsmen, ship, um, and, um, and based on that deliver um, additional services, ambient services, um, um, etc. Let me just jump to the, to the, to the, to the idea of what um, Azerbaijan is, is low food destination um, is. Azerbaijan was, uh, um, again, from a media, uh, CNN, uh, called the culinary, uh, culinary gateway uh, to the east. Um, um, Azerbaijan, in its history, is, um, is um, um, full of micro and small scale farmers. Um, you, you almost don't see any, any, any large um, um, uh, agribusiness um, uh, here. It was the greenhouse of the Soviet Union, not only, um, not only of the Soviet Union, you see a lot in, in Europe, you see a lot of uh, basically produce coming from, from Azerbaijan, vegetables, tomatoes, potatoes, uh, pomegranate, um, uh, fejoa, hazelnuts, uh, I think Azerbaijan, especially in the, when, the, when it comes to mass production, is now known uh, as a country of uh, hazelnuts uh, um, in, in, uh, in Europe. And, um, and um, but on the countryside, uh, there is a lot of, uh, uh, there is still a lot of um, herders. Uh, we have uh, uh, here um, cheesemakers, farmers, butchers, bakers, and so on. And um, all around these um, 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 uh, unique, unique producers, we are creating these uh, experiences. Um, one part, there is obviously some, uh, some uh, important elements in Azerbaijani uh, cuisine, which are outstanding is like, for example, the pomegranate, um, which was also in 2020 inscribed in the UNESCO uh, um, intangible list of uh, world heritage. And um, basically in every village um, is, uh, is famous for something. So you would only get the potatoes uh, uh, from Gedabe, you would only get uh, basically the pomegranate from Gürcai or the apples from Guba. So every village uh, has its reputation here. And when you go to the local farmers markets, also in the big cities like Baku, um, you would really ask for this product. So um, the baseline was here with Kovchek uh, um, um, and Slow Food coming in into that. Uh, uh, into that. We really managed um, in the Northwestern part, a beautiful area. Um, it's, um, it's nestled on the great Caucasus mountains. It's the area also with uh, uh, extremely uh, fertile earth, wine is growing there. Um, many, uh, very few people know that Azerbaijan is a mainly uh, uh, Muslim country, is, um, is one of the really um, oldest wine producers also. This is the region where this borders to Georgia. So very, very well um, um, located for develop um, such, a, such a model of, um, of slow food, of a slow food travel destination. Obviously, um, COVID-19, unprecedented, I think, for all of us, hit us very, very hard. But also to your question, Mikhail, I think um, uh, COVID-19 in that sense was one of the biggest um, uh, opportunities for an, an idea of uh, like slow food uh, travel 
to to become really famous we saw like and i've discussed that with many colleagues uh, around the world that especially domestic travel during these years with lockdowns borders closed etc people started to discover their own regions and um, one of the main um, i would say problems or challenges uh, in developing tourism is um, that people do not, locals do uh, most of the time not appreciate what is very close uh, to them, what is in front of the house, what grows here. So that people appreciate a potato, that people appreciate like uh, an apple is very rare. But when we do understand what the global situation looks like, it is amazing to have a big variety of apples of, uh, of all sorts. So um, there is many countries who have lost that. So I think this connection um, in, in re-establishing again, reconnecting with your own um, uh, with your own homeland, with, uh, with the idea of what is growing in your in, in, in proximity, what you, when you do not cross the borders, when you discover basically uh, the own countryside, this is what we have uh, uh, really, um, experienced in 2020, um, now even experiences borders in Azerbaijan are still closed. People just travel, um, travel and discover the regions, and this gives also um, a, a, a huge uh, drive, I think, to the idea of slow food travel to put really local produce, local specialities, um, unique elements in the in the in the in the in the forefront of uh, of such a product and. Um, uh, uh, funny enough, like uh, Kovchak is only uh, is, is running, but due to pandemics, like the project also had uh, unfortunate delays. But there is already interest from other destinations, other destinations within Azerbaijan. I spoke to other colleagues from uh, uh, Georgia uh, the other day. Said, "Ah, what are you doing? How did you get that project?" So the spillover, that uh, the idea of like uh, 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 I think is also is uh, as important as implementing. Um, it um, it in 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 the context of uh, of uh, of a project of a donors project. Apart from that, one more one more element. I'm I'm stopping. I, I hope I'm not too much over time. Is uh, the ambient services we create around here in Azerbaijan? Um, we've used the pandemic to do like really regional development. We have been uh, uh, marking hiking routes, 20 hiking routes, new hiking routes uh, in the country. The Caucasus is fairly unknown, especially in Azerbaijan, as for hiking, trekking. Um, we are currently improving the local rural guest houses, so an important infrastructure to stay because um, when you when you want to experience the food and the culinary aspects of a destination, you need um, local regional also um, accommodation units and to upgrade them is um, is I think one of the one of the major major tasks. There is a, we have launched new products here. Bird watching um, is out in a month. Amazing bird watching locations. So all this, what comes along then and is not really part of the core element of this onion, but it's an important element because there is more to do than only um, eat, eat, drink and taste. And so, and this is what, uh, uh, what I think makes the package then of a slow food travel destination, that this is all well combined with nature, with uh, with locals, with like localizes, um, and um, although I don't like the the word, but um, 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 a fairly authentic experience. Thank you so much, Florian. I think you, uh, what you said you said a couple of things that are extremely important. Uh, first of all, the importance also of discovering our background. You're saying something extremely important. I think this matters for two reasons. It's not just a, we're all discovering right now that we have a background, right? <laughs> Where to go and and, 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 and things just, just in our backyard that we can discover. And I think also from a slow food perspective, this has always been quite essential in make, making so that the product remains authentic. Um, if I'm coming from abroad, it's very easily that I will not be able to distinguish between folklore and authenticity. Local people definitely do know the difference. And, um, and I think also this goes back to what you said in the beginning. I, th I think you explained very well that uh, uh, how sofa travel is about going beyond the folklore of culinary uh, art and go to the authenticity of gastronomy in its wider sense. And, uh, and you also, thank you, you also showed how Azerbaijan is clearly one perfect such destination uh, for such authentic experiences given the, the incredible heritage and, and people, of course, that uh, Azerbaijan uh, possess. 
Uh, let me, so thank you very much. Uh, please stay with us because we have already questions and if uh, I'll pause question at the end of all the intervention. So I'll, I'll pass the word now to, to Anna Kansheva, who is the project coordinator of uh, CovCheck, which is a, a project financed by the European Commission that aims to foster economic regeneration and the well-being of rural communities in the greater Caucasus mountain region in a model that Sofia has been implementing several times, which is the transfer of best practices we had we're experiencing in, in, in the European Union, in Italy, in other countries, and, and, and passes through countries that have uh, outstanding potential from a gastronomic perspective. So Thank I would you. like to, to introduce the, Anna to introduce the project, if you can, and what has been achieved so far, and to explain why the gastronomic component and the tourist one are so interlinked in the case of Azerbaijan. Thank, thank you so much. Welcome. Thank you, Michele. Thank you, Florian, for this inspi inspiring introduction. And uh, exactly my goal today is to um, really uh, show you the context in which the slow food travel destination can be developed. And I would like to use uh, an example of this uh, project uh, um, that we are implementing together with the Azerbaijan Tourist Board and uh, thanks to the uh, finance from the European Union. So um, as you can see, uh, one of the very objective of this uh, project is to promote rural tourism. So this is in the heart of our activity. And uh, uh, so what, where is uh, this all start? starts and uh, how we can so where do we start uh, we always start with the mapping with the mapping of agrobiodiversity of this territory we always start with the arc of taste so called so you many of you know that this is a international catalog so we started with the understanding what is this food heritage that belongs to this territory what are these products what are these species breeds what are these varieties that we can then show to the tourists and um, by now we have identified uh, 29 arc of taste products so they are in danger of in risk of being extinct a part of those that are traditional and widely used and i just want to emphasize the importance of the um, the touring for this uh, for safeguarding this uh, product because for instance I, I hope that you can see on the uh, right uh, uh, upper corner amazing woman whom we met uh, in Gach region in Marsan village um, she uh, she's Halima her name and what she holds is the Marsan tomato so this is the tomato that her um, mother inherited the seeds of this tomato from her grandmother and so they kept they kept this uh, seeds and um, they are the only family who grows this uh, this uh, variety of tomato and what is more uh, the it's me it has an amazing taste it's very smooth it's very uh, corposo we call it in Italian but it's um, it cannot be transported. So it's really the case for the tourists to come to Marsan village, to Gach, to see this and to taste this, uh, uh, this amazing tomato in, uh, in any restaurant or in particular farms that they are, uh, that are cultivating this. So this is very important. Uh, to not only bring the products to the consumers, but also bring the consumers to some products that are so fragile that they cannot be uh, transported or anyhow be. Um, or there is another example of also uh, arc of taste product, uh, let's say even technique. Uh, maybe you know uh, there is a niche village in uh, uh, Azerbaijan where the Udi people live. This is indigenous population, and they have something really amazing. They have the wine wine yards, uh, say on the trees. So they plant the wines near the trees, and so then this the plant goes up in the canopy, and so every September, August, September for the Vendemia, they just need to, you know, uh, go up, clean the trees, 
technically like this and uh, collect the uh, the fruit. So this is also the amazing experience that, but you can experience it only visiting this place. So you can safeguard and you can show as a tourist the importance of this safeguarding this product, saving this uh, technique, uh, this production technique, because you want to come and, <clears throat> and, and, and see how they do it. And then uh, we also have the, um, okay, so we have some Presidia projects already launched. And uh, for those of you who might not know the Presidia, the communities of the producers, so we kind of help them get together and cooperate in order to maybe um, have some improvements in technical issues and also in marketing and access to, access to market and promotion of their products. And we have already launched the um, Madrasa grape and uh, rose hip syrup uh, and <clears throat> amazing um, women, really women led the presidia in, uh, in Ismaili region and also the uh, Tababaha, I'm not the one that already was mentioned, also very famous, um, let's say product, very famous uh, of Azerbaijan on international arena. And this is all another way also to uh, to understand who are the producers. So this is uh, by having the Presidia, we can give uh, the tourists an opportunity to see how these particular products are produced, to get to know that this is not an non anonymous product, but this this face and this producer and, the, and his family or her family uh, the, uh, beyond uh, this uh, mere label on the on the on the cheese or on the bottle of wine. So this is very very important to establish the community of producers who then will be the guests for the tourists. And uh, also, this is uh, very important, especially uh, slow food travel is very important. You can see here uh, the examples of the Presidia we already launched. And you can see Madrasa. And it's very important not only to taste the Madrasa wine, but also to come and see how few hectares are dedicated to this really endangered local variety or it's important to go to see how the pastures of buffaloes, the Caucasian buffaloes, another presidio that are, we are going to launch soon, are settled. So this is a very uh, intrinsic and very traditional way of having this common pasture, which uh, Azerbaijani call Naban. So this is where tourism, again, come to the territory and help uh, give the importance to what it uh, to to its heritage and then finally of course it's it's we cannot go without the cooks because um, as a tourist we want also to taste the dishes made with those ingredients that we have seen uh, uh, growing or seen producing by the producers. So we, we have launched in December the Cook's Lines and you can see now that we have many of producers or of cooks, uh, excuse me, in Baku, but we are now enlarging this union, enlarging this amazing network of very uh, responsible chefs, of those who really understand their role in promoting this, uh, this uh, gastronomic heritage to the region. So then people come to this new slow food travel destination, they can also taste uh, these amazing dishes. So uh, concluding, I would like to emphasize that having this mapping exercise and identifying then the producers of the product. So not only the products itself, but also the producers of the products and then adding the uh, mobilizing the network of cooks, these three pillars are very important and they are fundamental for the development, for the development of successful and very attractive slow food travel destination. Thank you, Michele. Thank you all for your attention. Thank you very much, Anna. I think you said something very important now. Um, when we started organizing Terra Madre, I think also Giacomo knows it very well. Um, we did it to bring the farmers and meet the consumers. And by this interaction, to give them the opportunity to understand that what they were cultivating, producing had a value, that they should have confidence in their work. Well, there are two ways in which you can actually uh, meet this 
a goal, right? Either you bring the, 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 the farmers to the consumers or you bring the consumers to the farmers. And the second actually is even more effective because one thing if, is if I taste a product without the farmer, one thing is if I test the product with the farmer in front of me, and one thing is if I test the product with the farmer in front of me in that given context. It happens several times that even delicious dishes, when you take them outside their context, they don't taste the same. Uh, so this is why this is an incredible dimension that tourism add to gastronomy. And this is exactly one of the reasons why we, we have done slow food travel. And, um, but let's hear now from Nassimi. Nassimi Sadiq Sadeh is a sort of coordinator within the Culture Project. And um, he has been the man that, um, of course, together with other partners who has been into the ground uh, and, to, and talking with the farmers, talking with the several stakeholders that we have identified to deliver our first destination in the region. So may I ask you to go more in details into the implementation of soft food travel in, in the great mountain? Uh, of Caucasus region, and what are the expectations of the stakeholders, and what are, in a way, the threats and the, and, and the opportunities that, you, that you're seeing now on the ground? Uh, thank you, Michele. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm really happy to attend this forum. And as a country, we are really excited uh, that Slow Food is in Azerbaijan, and we'll have a, a good result in the end, hopefully. And I'll share the screen with you uh, with presentation. So my name is Nassimi Sadekzadeh. I'm Slow Food Travel Coordinator for this project. So uh, today I'm gonna to talk about steps we took in order to identify uh, stakeholders for slow food travel, potential slow food travel experiences, ex expectations of the local stakeholders, major threats and difficulties, and next uh, steps. We started with clarifying slow food travel guidelines and their suitability to local context. Then we visited pilot areas and assessed potential stakeholders with dedicated questionnaires for producers, restaurants and accommodation based on slow food travel guidelines. Afterwards, we prepared a list of suitable stakeholders. Now we have 31 stakeholders, uh, 21 of them are producers, four restaurants, six accommodation facilities. But, but this list will be updated whenever needed. As you can see, this list is slow food travel guidelines, which has different criteria criteria for general, for food production, for restaurants and accommodation. And these are the questions that we used in field visits for producers, restaurants, and for hotels uh, accommodation. And finally, this is the stakeholders list. Based on all data we collected, we created kind of database of these stakeholders for each district with their potential for slow food travel and with comments for issues or improvements. In the end of each district, we put additional touristic places in the area so we can include them in final itinerary offer development together with slow food travel experiences. If we summarize all potential experiences from the list, uh, we can suggest to our guests experiences like wine tastings, cooking with hosts, experiencing village lifestyle, tastings of products of slow food producers, master classes like in beekeeping, halva making, cheese making, uh, fruit picking, bread and local sweets making, 
additional and also additional tourism experiences to support it, like camping, hiking, horse riding, fishing, carpet weaving. It's just uh, supporting uh, tourism uh, activities, as uh, Mr. Florian mentioned. Now I will share some photos so you can have a better idea. In this photo, we can offer experience of taking a Caucasian buffalo herd to pastures together with locals. There is tradition of Nabat uh, in which villagers take turn in taking all buffaloes of the village. And uh, this tradition, uh, not only with uh, the buffaloes, also can be uh, done with the, the sheep as well. Uh, these are photos that we took during our field visits. In these photos, you can see our farmers to produce wine from local Azerbaijani grape, Madrasa, which um, Anna mentioned. Here you can see our beekeepers. In second photo from top, our farmer Sabuhi uh, breeds um, bees which don't stink. Uh, in, the, in the two photos at the bottom, Badrattin uh, has an amazing place to showcase how people would get honey in ancient times using natural hives. Here, I collected photos where we can have fruit, vegetable picking for guests as experience. On the left top corner, you can see our rose hip syrup, which is also presidia. In these photos, you can see potential for cooking with hosts and master classes for making for cheese, halva local sweets. Exam for example, our guests can take flour from water mill and cook their halva in a halva maker. Our final photos show our restaurants and accommodation facilities. Uh, I will give you one example. In order to include restaurant in slow food travel, it must have at least one product or slow food uh, uh, used in a meal or menu. Uh, you can see photo at bottom right where our restaurant in Gabala is displaying honey of our producer Sabuhi. Uh, so it's a good uh, example that uh, we, how we can in include a restaurant in, uh, in our uh, slow food network. So expectations of the local stakeholders. Uh, I divided it for three places. For producers, it's awareness. They want more people to know about them and their stories. And they also want to have additional income. And moreover, they want to preserve their culinary traditions. For accommodation, they want to make the stay of their guests more interesting and also attract more guests who are sustainable aware and contri will contribute to the local community. For restaurants, uh, they want to diversify their menu. They want to have clean and tasty ingredients from locals. Uh, so major threats and difficulties that I come up with is with the travel restrictions, uh, lockdowns, and to make farmers sometimes can be difficult to work together, but uh, we are we, uh, solving that. Uh, that issues, also infrastructure and uh, with packaging and labeling. And, but all these issues, uh, difficulties will be overcome uh, with the help of uh, the Rion Tourism Board. And uh, for next steps, we plan to have capacity building trainings uh, and for networking events, and also in the end have offer development with uh, itineraries. And these are just a couple of photos from our field visit. We use this opportunity also to have small face-to-face uh, -face trainings, uh, but we'll have uh, with online trainings and also offline trainings whenever possible. So thank you. Thank you so attention. much. Thank you so much, Nassim. I think it's uh, really interesting to- Hopefully, uh, you, if you have any questions, uh, feel free. Yes, I'm gathering all the questions, Nassimi, <laughs> and we'll pose them at the end. Uh, but thank you so much. I think that um, it's um, you show very well, actually, how um, when when so food entered into into the travel perspective and in, in, in the travel realm, uh, we thought it was easier than food, but it's actually much more complex than food. Much more complex than food. 
the products that you are actually getting in the end, it's really influenced by the people who are meant to consume it. Uh, while in food, more or less, the food products always remains the same. And this forces uh, all, the, all the stakeholders who are involved in it, but slow food especially, to adapt and adjust the strategy of slow food travel to all the context we are reaching. And, but um, the desire to communicate and to support all this uh, beauty and this uh, authenticity and these livelihoods especially, uh, give us the force and the strength to always be imaginative and uh, try to shape the strategy according to the context, which is exactly in a way what we're doing in Italy as well, because even if it is, I mean, probably it's closer to Austria as a context, uh, as you know, so for travel first we developed in Austria, still Italy is a very different realm for tourism. Tourist products varies a lot. It's completely different from what they expect people when they're going into rural Austria. And uh, Giacomo knows this very well. Um, Giacomo um, has been a long uh, um, a member of Slow Food uh, in Italy and uh, is a food experience manager and part of the board of Slow Food in Campania region. And uh, he works in the Amalfi Coast, which is very, as I said in the beginning, it's a very famous tourist destination. It's, nonetheless, it is also a destination that has, faces a lot of problems. So, um, Giacomo, welcome. And could you tell us more about the, the itineraries that we're about to launch? And we just launched in, in the uh, SSO for Italy in, uh, in Italy. And um, as I said, you are an expert in experiential tourism. And uh, can you tell us, tell us why and how farmers and local rural communities can benefit from it? So, thank you and welcome, Giacomo. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Um, yeah, benefits. Benefits. Uh, it's uh, it's important. It's important uh, because uh, we are talking about our community. So the benefits. Uh, let's say, first of all, it's for our community. But uh, our community, it's something more than what we can think about. Thinking, for example, about a tourist system. Um, let, I would love to, to tell you about uh, some uh, specific point uh, regarding uh, what actually we do. We are, uh, we are studying uh, since few years, um, um, like uh, Michele just said, I'm uh, um, a food experience manager. I, I, I run and I, I design and uh, I'm, a, I'm a designer. My background is in design. So uh, designing experience to put in contact the, uh, the local community together with the, the, the visitors, it's, it's my, 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 my first goal. Um, and together with Slow Food, we are trying to go more in deep in understanding how we can help our community, our local community in running uh, as better as possible their everyday activity. So, first of all, I heard from uh, uh, some of you uh, so many times the, uh, the word the unique, uniqueness. Uniqueness, it's, it's uh, what, what probably uh, distinct our, our uh, make the difference in between what we do as a, as, a, as a worldwide community involved in hosting and accommodating people. Um, and to make you an example, what, what is uniqueness for, for, for a, a so complex system, like the system we, we, we're trying to build and we are trying to, to, to do uh, all over the world? Uh, uniqueness, it's, uh, it's something of, uh, of uh, much more easy than we, 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 we can uh, understand uh, um, or, or just think about. It's, it's when you are, uh, you are a chef, uh, you are uh, you are uh, you are a fisherman, and you try to transmit to your guests uh, your passion. You try to tell them why you decided to do a so uh, hard job, like a chef or a fisherman. So the traditions of your family, but also the tradition of your community, it's in the job you do. So that's the, 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 the connection, the connection point with something of more than a dish 
you are you are you are offering to your guests so we are the testimonials of our community that's important that's a, that's an important point of what we do every day uh, and then uh, another important point is about uh, the the um, the emotions our everyday job is about uh, telling emotions we we are probably on a level of uh, let the our guests feeling and understand something that go beyond their expectations that's 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 very important and uh to make this it's important to put in order our 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 steps our everyday activities we do because everything should be understandable as much as possible uh few weeks ago we we we, we talked with michele about uh, about the, the formula if uh, if um, our job can have a specific formula so the, the question was uh, um, um, is there a specific formula we should follow to run our activities um, in some way i should say uh, no there is not a specific formula every one of us has his peculiarity everyone makes a different job but let's say um, think about people we are hosting are people uh, in uh, on hol on their holidays on their vacation they are getting a relaxing moment so think about timing timing it's something that belongs so much to to us to every one of us think about the word slow food slow food uh, means in 50 percent of of uh, of the title about timing so timing it's very very important so how slow should be the activity so probably slow it's something that belongs to a behavior we have inside but think about the timing of uh, let let's say a, a cooking experience how long should be a cooking experience 10 hours one hour so it mostly depends on 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 many factors you can regulate based on your experience. Uh, um, so that's important about formula. And then um, feeling. Another keyword is feeling. How we how we are able to let our guests feel. The, sense, the, the the good sensation and feel and be part of the experiences we offer. So uh, feeling it's uh, uh, when we are able to feel the gap in between us like operators and then like guests, when we are able to feel the gap in between the host and the, and the guest. Probably you will remember it was the 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 original I'm of of uh, Airbnb when it was born in 2010, 10 years ago. Uh, what's the what's the, the 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 advantage we have like like a network, like a worldwide network? The 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 the, the good advantage we we can we can we can get it's about the um the idea that we are a network we are a network uh, of operators but not only we are also we are also a network of guests we can involve our guests all over the world and transmit them that slow food it's not only traveling even if we are we we would probably engage them through uh, a traveling experiences slow food is much more slow food it's many many other things we uh, they, they 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 probably don't expect before they book the experience our experience and, and one important thing is that we should be able to overturn the paradigm of uh, the classical tourism we don't do experience for people we do experience with people that's very important. That's the key. We do it with them. That's that makes the difference. That 
probably uh, provides an added value to the idea of community. That's the community. The community, it's a group of people that share activities, share passions, share things to do every day. That's important. And then uh, another important thing is the network. Network in between what we, uh, we have around us. Network is about, uh, uh, for example, understanding, like uh, 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 Nasimi was telling before, uh, um, uh, a network of many, many uh, aspects joined together, like accommodations, restaurants, transport, services, attractions. Think about usually the classical uh, tourist machine works when all this aspect to wor are working together. If one of these aspects doesn't work, the system can have a problem. It's true we could be able to uh, transform the, the, a bad point in, in a good point. We can transform it in a, in a, in a, in a, in a good experience. And uh, at the end, at the end, I should uh, I should say about uh, our way of being sustainable. What makes the difference uh, in uh, joining our experience and 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 another experience from an other organization? So sustainable for us obviously means uh, having the peculiarity of defending biodiversity. They often never expect to be involved. In the, that in, in an experience in which they are contributing to save the planet, for example, eating a species instead of another, and then promote our agriculture. Our agriculture and production is different. It's not the conventional one. It's different because many of us are involved in, in sustainable production. At the end, keep in mind that um, everyday life should be sustainable. So every action we do in our life should be moved in our experience. If we are able to do this, our experience will be, let me use this word because it's used so much in the, in the, in the tourism, authentic, authenticity. It's another important key word. We can perceive only following some of those uh, aspect I mentioned, but also including you in what you do every day. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Giacomo. Um, um, before we have, uh, before concluding, we have a, a series of very short questions, but let me point out one very important things. I think that uh, the tourism and food share many things, but one thing from a slow food perspective that they both share is that quality and sustainability, they are ultimately um, guarded and safeguarded by communities. Individuals alone cannot make the difference. Yes, sometimes they can, sometimes we have genius who are able on their own to, 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 to contribute to sustainability and quality, but it, human beings, normal human beings like all of us, most of the time needs communities to fulfill sustainability and quality. And this is true for food and for tourism. I have a question, a quick question for Nassimi uh, that was uh, posed from our, from our um, participants was, uh, what do you mean in your presentation by the term labeling? One minute, please. Uh, so uh, with labeling, uh, I, post, I put it in my slides as a difficulty, labeling and packaging. Uh, the reason for that, by labeling we mean, um, the information about the product, which is produced by the, our slow food producer. So um, it's it's difficulty, but it's it can be solved. Uh, it just need to be some um, information put on the label that uh, this product it can be sent to restaurant or for the supermarket because they uh, may not accept it without label. And for us, for labeling, uh, what will differ from uh, other labels, it will be story, it will have a story of the producer, uh, about the producer, not only product, who, who is this producer and where it's located. So, so it can share the story in a short message. Thank you so much. I have a question for Giacomo and then one another last one for uh, uh, Florian. Um, 
Do you organize SoFo travel as packages or are these destinations for individual tourists? This is a very hard question. Giacomo, what would you answer to this? Um, yes, the answer, let, let me, uh, the answer is uh, let me thinking about uh, customizations. So uh, customize, it's probably uh, um, another bad word. It doesn't, doesn't work so much with our behavior, other way to, 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 to show and, and work every day uh, through, through the, our activities. But uh, I think uh, it's, it's possible to imagine that our experience could be made for one person remember the timing I, I mentioned before timing it's important one person would love to spend two days in contact with our cheese production let's say uh, a group would love to spend one hour and we should be able to fit their uh, our um, uh, emotions in one hour it's different we are a kind of movie director let's say, movie directors of uh, what we can do. Obviously, remember the system I mentioned before, every activity should be fit in, uh, in, the, in the regulations of the area. Uh, we, we, apart the COVID, but mm -hmm. in the regulations we, um, we, we have in our local areas. So mm -hmm. should, we should be flexible. Flexibility, okay. it's another keyword. Thank you so much. And uh, I'll ask this question uh, in a different way also to Florian, meaning when he wrote the project, he remembers that um, uh, Sofo Travel was mainly targeting individual tourists that could go on the Sofo Travel Carinthia website and book their experiences. So how does he image uh, the role of tour operators into the picture of Sofo Travel in Azerbaijan in this case? I think, um, um... The discussion, the discussion is correct and uh, uh, legitimate. legitimate. Um, uh, the idea of uh, of uh, uh, slow food travel, I think, is is less about um, uh, being for individual tourists or for group tourists. Um, although there are restrictions, and um, how can this experience um, create? I say between uh, people interacting with each other. Um, Obviously, that's a topic because you you won't be able to do like um, 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 uh, co-produce a cheese, for example, with a group of uh, of a bus of fifty people. Um, uh, but you also might not open it for one person because it's uh, it's simply not uh, feasible. Uh, because these uh, uh, farmers they have other things to do than just like also to welcome and interact with with tourists. So um, this is a fine line what we have found out in creating these experiences. And um, I think what is really key is um, is uh, is putting putting the producers uh, producers on the map. And uh, I love to refer to this map uh, which we created in. Um, in Alpe Adria, in in the in the southern part of Austria, is um, that uh, basically we create the awareness that there is local unique producers, there is a, a craftsman uh, uh, doing something extraordinary, and I think um, then it should be up to travel agencies, tour operators, individual to basically connect also to say this is my this is my potential anchors in the region to food and culinary to the to the unique authentic if authenticity exists, um, I put this as a question mark, um, uh, experiences in the region, and this is where I can get to. And such a map is like, a, um, 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 is, 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 is the beauty in itself because it shows us the variety, it shows us um, uh, the richness of, of local produce. If I then want to connect with it, um, with my friends alone, if uh, if the producer wants me to come in three or four, is like and in what timing? Obviously, this is uh, important technicalities, which uh, were then in the in the in the last part of the project the most difficult to overcome, also with the producers um, and and tourism interests. But I think it can, by my experience, it can be bridged, uh, although you need a very individual approach and understanding for uh, uh, of the needs of the producer of the craftsman and um, to fit tourism into her or his uh, uh, or family schedule of uh, being able to produce being able to do what their job is and at the same time um, um, having this um, 
beauty and pleasure also um, of connecting with tourists. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Um, so, and, I, and it's now time to conclude. I thank all the cold travelers that we had today on our, on our trip to discover the new destination of Slovo Travel. Um, hopefully we will soon be able to meet in person to travel again to Azerbaijan later as your uh, hashtag claims and also to the Amalfi Coast and other destinations we're working on. Thank you for all the, uh, all the people that attended this forum and um, please uh, keep following the program of Terra Madre on our Terra Madre Salona del Gusto website. And uh, if you have any additional uh, question about Slow Food Travel, please connect to Slow Food and we will be uh, more than happy to answer to you. So thank you everybody. Thank you, Corian. Thank you, Anna. Thank you, Giacomo. And thank you, Nassimi. And have a good weekend to you all. Bye-bye. Um,